this next one is going to be a little different. This is going to be, it might be a little hard for me, actually. So I'm glad you are all here. <laughs> We're going to be going back and forth with some comparisons with this story as well. The story that's, you know, part of my life. And this one, this one is about how, you know, we can reach out. Sometimes we need to reach out for help. So let me find the video here that I want to start out with. Because I want to play something for you. And how many of you have ever watched Fight Club? Some people dig it. Some people don't. It's one of my top movies. I, I, I dig it. There's so much that it's going on in this movie. But this part that I, that I want to share goes along with what it is that I'm going to say. So here's another question. Do you know why oxygen masks are on airplanes? We're looking, I'm looking in the comments here. We got people who are like, yeah, we've watched it. Number one rule of Fight Club. Yes. <laughs> Like I said, some of this is probably going to be like, what? How is, where's the comparison here? How is this working? And Sabrina says, yes, you got to save you first before helping others. Hmm? You're, you're honing in on there. Yes. Okay. Let me share the screen here. All right, here we go. You know why they put oxygen masks on planes? So you can breathe. Oxygen gets you high. In a catastrophic emergency, you're taking giant panic breaths. Suddenly you become euphoric, docile. You accept your fate. It's all right here. Emergency water landing, 600 miles an hour. Blank faces, calm as Hindu cows. That's, um, that's an interesting theory. Okay, <clears throat> let me turn this back down to regular volume. Now, I'm not sure if you could hear that. The, the audio is kind of low, so I wanna, I wanna repeat the quote that is said here, okay? And Brad Pitt's character says, you know why they put oxygen masks on planes? It's responded, you know, so that you can breathe. And he says, oxygen gets you high. In a catastrophic emergency, you're taking giant panic breaths. Suddenly, you become euphoric, docile. You accept your fate. <laughs> it's an interesting quote, right? It's something that whenever, whenever I fly, I would think about, you know, what if, what if something happened? What if something ever happened to me? Is that, does that really happen? And all those times asking about it, <laughs> it ended up, something ended up happening, okay? Which we're going to get into here. So, how many of you have dark humor? You have that dispatch dark humor, right? How many of you use it when you're in dispatch? Now, as you know, as I said, I love to laugh. Laughing is good medicine. And if you can't laugh in this profession sometimes, you might burn out. So there's a lot of times, especially when I was in dispatch, that I would try to laugh as much as possible to break up the craziness that is 911. Okay? All right. Let's remember that. So... I was on a work trip, okay? I was on a work trip one time. This was a couple of years ago now. And I was going to be flying out of Birmingham, Alabama. And I was going to I was going to be going to Indianapolis. I, I had a connection in Detroit. So I was out for work. I was going to be headed back and I boarded the plane. Now, I boarded the plane and I had had like a 3-week back-to-back schedule where I was traveling like crazy. And some of the stuff 
it ended up it was it was kind of boring okay I'll, I'll be honest it was kind of boring what you know some of the things that i was going out for but it was work you know i had to do it so i'm sitting on the plane and i remember sitting there and for whatever reason i decided to have some dark humor you know get a little sassy and you know how and hopefully none of you are watching right now in dispatch because of what i'm about to say but there are some times when you have dark humor and you you tempt fate right the dispatch gods someone might throw out the q word and everything goes to hell right seems to happen every single time whether it's a full moon or it's the q word and you're throwing it out there with sass and dark humor and you're tempting fate well i did the same thing i did the same thing on the plane that i would have done in dispatch when there wasn't a lot of stuff going on i was thinking man there wasn't a lot of stuff going on this week this time that i've been gone I'm finally going to go home and it's just going to be a boring ass flight. So before we took off, I ended up putting a quote posting on, on Facebook. And I made a post that had to do with the movie La Bamba. How many of you have seen the movie La Bamba? Do you you know who Richie Valen is? Uh, Valens is um, Buddy Holly, the big the big bopper. Do you know this story? If so, in the comments, what happened to them? What happened to them in this story? Real life story. Just watching the comments here. Some people have watched it. Yes, plane crash. They die. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So there is at the end of the movie, okay? At the end of the movie, there is a quote. They all get on this plane. <clears throat> okay? Yes, in Iowa. Clear Lake, right? Clear Lake, Iowa. Which is crazy sharing this <laughs> while we're here for the Iowa APCO conference. So I'm sitting there and I quote on Facebook. I put on there quote from my favorite one of my favorite movies la bamba and it says hey richie same name my parents call me and my family call me richie hey richie relax man everything is cool besides the sky belongs to the stars right i posted this what a smart ass <laughs> because after i had posted this i kind of freaked out i thought what are we doing? You're about to get on a, you're about to go up into the air. Why are you tempting fate? What's funny is that I didn't delete it. <laughs> I left it there, but I remember I, I, I quickly did like the sign of the cross. And I said, God, please, please help us that we're going to be okay. I wasn't thinking about the quote. Thank you. So in comparison, this quote that I put out there, Basically, the same thing as saying the Q word in dispatch. I was tempting. I was tempting fate <laughs> in a way. So even after doing that, we took off. I had my headphones on. I felt good. I was listening to the Beatles. And as I was listening to the song, kind of feeling the rumble around. And I want you to imagine this as I'm talking to you about this, because we're going to get into some comparisons here in a moment. As I'm sitting there dozing off, thinking this is going to be a boring ass flight, something happens. I'm listening to music. And we had already gotten up into the air. You know, service was going to start here. So we hadn't been up there that long, okay? And as I'm dozing and I'm listening to music, I hear a loud pop. And when I open my eyes, 
This is what I saw. This is what I saw. Now, you're probably wondering, why the hell would you take a picture of this? I fell asleep like this. And when I heard that pop and I saw that dangling in front of me, for whatever reason, the first thing I thought was click. Because at that moment, I was thinking, this can't be happening right now. There must be some sort of malfunction. <laughs> and I looked around. I looked around and everyone was confused. Which is crazy, right? Because we get instruction. In the beginning, you see this coming down, put your mask on and put yours on first, right? And in comparison, when we're taking phone calls and we're in situations that could be catastrophic to our own mental health and wellness, we're supposed to take care of ourselves first, right? Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we put some blockers up. We don't hear also those who are trying to reach out for us to help us. We're blocking it out. <laughs> so I'm looking around. I see this going on and everyone else is doing the same thing. We're all looking around at each other in disbelief that this is actually happening right now. I remember looking at the flight attendants and they themselves are in shock that this has just happened. And then we hear a ding and boom, you can feel it. it starts going down, it starts going down fast. There was a girl who was sitting in back of me who was holding on to her infant and, and holding, holding tight onto her infant. And when that ding happened, which usually happens, right, when, when, the, when a message is coming back and forth and they have to pick up the phone, that ding happened, the, the, the plane starts going and she yells out, God, no. Still in shock. And as I turned back, the flight attendants had put their stuff back right away, hopped onto the phone and got over the intercom and yelled for everyone to put your masks on because nobody had done it. We were all still in shock that all of this was going on. Okay. So you can feel the plane shaking. You can hear everything. And of course, them yelling, put your masks on, put your masks on. The pilot comes over and he ends up saying, and you can tell in his voice that something's wrong. And he, he says, we'll be diverting to Huntsville. We don't know what's going on. Please prepare for landing. It's crazy. So, as this is in front of my face, let me kind of give you a taste of what was going on at that moment. All my troubles seem so far away. So I want you to imagine for a moment your plane is going down and you look around at everyone and at that moment this is what you hear. Everyone had their phone out trying to reach for help or to say what was going on? Why she had to 
And that's what it was that was happening for me as well, because I'm struggling as this music is playing. I'm struggling to get my mask on. And why was I struggling? Because I still had my headphones on at that moment. I had my headphones on. I couldn't get my mask on so that I could breathe. Now, let's stop here for a moment. This is, this is where we can compare in the scenario where sometimes in life, we have our own personal plane that's going down, right? Emotionally, mentally, depending on the types of calls and how we've been dealing with them. That's our own plane that's going down. And all we could do to ask for help in those times is if we opened our mouth to ask for that help or to hear someone else that's trying to help us. In my situation and in this comparison, it's like you have your headphones on and you, you don't know what's going on or why you're struggling because you're not listening to anybody else who is talking to you, who is trying to help you or you reaching out, right? So what did it take for me in that situation? I took off my headphones. And once I took off those headphones, I was able to hear. I was able to breathe because once I took down that barrier, I was able to finally get the mask on and breathe in this situation. And it's the same way in real life, right? When, when we need help and it's okay for us to ask for that help. Now, I mentioned the girl who was holding on to her infant, right? What I didn't realize at the time because I was struggling with my headphones and I was listening, I was hearing that song in my head. I didn't realize also that at that, at that time that the girl was singing. She was singing. When I took those headphones off, this is what I heard. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. <clears throat> yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Now, she was singing that to her infant, but she was singing it loud enough that it was almost as if she was singing for everyone who was on the plane at that moment. For our comfort to help us in a certain way. So in this comparison, sometimes we block things out, right? We don't ask for that help. Or there might be someone who is asking us, are you okay? And what do we say? Yeah, I'm fine. How many of you have done that? You've had a bad call and someone asks, you all right? You okay? You got this? Are you good? And a lot of times we say, yeah, yeah, we're good, but we're not listening. We don't have, we, we have those headphones on, right? And in comparison, I couldn't hear this comfort or anything that was coming from this girl who was singing to her infant, but also seemed like she was singing for all of us to help us, to comfort us in that moment of whatever was going to happen. Also at that time, I start reaching out for help myself. 
of course. In that scenario, I'm on a plane. It's going down. All I can do is reach for my phone to try to text my loved ones to say simply that I love you or get on Wi-Fi. We had already surpassed the level that Wi-Fi was going to work and I couldn't, I had no signal on my phone. And it was at that moment that that quote in the beginning that I, I shared with you from Fight Club made sense <laughs> because I had accepted my fate. Whatever was about to happen, I accepted it. And in, in life, it's the same way, but especially as we talk about our own personal plane that is going down. But if we ask for help, we can land safely. We can do this together. And that's why we're here, right? We're here to learn from each other. Make this easier for each other. And like I said, I had accepted my fate at this time. Whatever was going to happen was going to happen. I had taken those headphones off. I had opened up. And I was listening to her sing. And I felt comfort. Because I was allowing it in. And it's the same way with our job. Because I was one of those dispatchers who held in my calls. I had people ask me, are you okay? Do you need help? Do you need to talk to somebody? No, I'm fine. Because I didn't want to look weak, right? But with all of us sharing stories and being here for each other, we're able to get past that and heal in a way. Find that form of closure together. And I see some of the comments here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some of these comments as well. It says, you understand us because you are one of us. You know our thoughts, but you say them out loud for us to hear. And uh, another one here that says, I've had days where at the moment when someone asked, I was fine. But when I got home, it all hit me. Right. Um, see, all the time, sometimes I say I'm fine because it's easier to say I'm fine than to have to go through whatever struggle, fear you have at that time. Another one here says we are trained communicators and the hardest part is to truly communicate. That's right. It's the craziest thing. In comparison to the story that I'm telling you in our lives, it's like those, it's like the headphones that are on, noise canceling. We don't want to hear what anybody else has to say. If we would just take them off and kind of listen and, and open up and let it come, we would be able to, to find that, that healing, to be able to understand. And that, that was how I did this. And again, in this metaphorical airplane, as I'm talking in our real life in, in our, in our own lives, we can, we can ask for help and again, land safely. So it was such a crazy experience <laughs> to go through all of this. And I remember looking over while this is happening and one of the passengers there had their window open and I could see the ground coming pretty fast. And I remember the smell of something kind of burning in the plane. I don't know what it was, but I remember that I continued to pray. Again, I had accepted my fate and I was listening to this mom sing to her child. It was comforting. I'm sure we were all finding comfort in that. And we landed safely. We landed safely. I did ask for help while I was on the plane. Someone heard me because we landed safely.
but it was probably one of the scariest things. And you know, even in life with these phone calls, when we're on a phone call and things are going downhill, it probably feels like a plane going down as well. But we're able to work through it. And when we're done with the call, If we get that chance to have a moment to ourselves, take it and ask for help. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to ask for help. There's no shame in asking for help. Again, I learned the hard way and I've been doing my best ever since to be able to help by sharing a lot of my life experience with everyone and comparing them to dispatch and how we react and all of this. So we ended up landing and <laughs> let me share something with you here. Something that I'll always have. This is my plane, September 20th, 2018, emergency landing. When I landed and I was talking to my family, my brother sent me a link an hour or so later, and it was to this video. And there we are. Now, in comparison, looking at what you just saw, plane coming down, no fire, no nothing, it says emergency landing, you would never know that all of what I told you actually was going on in that plane. None of it. Because it looks like nothing happened, right? Going back to the first story, where we don't know everyone's story and that we shouldn't judge things. It's the same thing here. You would never know that all of that that I told you happened on this flight. That's another thing that we can take away there. This is something that will always be with me. <laughs> I learned from it and I hope that you can learn from this as well in comparison to life experience and work experience how sometimes they can crash together but you can learn from how you react and with this plane the different things that happen there how sometimes our own plane that's going down would just help if we asked for help or listened to those who are trying to help us. I know it's hard. It's hard for us to sometimes look in the mirror and realize I might be the issue, right? We don't ever want to admit that. It's a hard pill to swallow. It's that sting that you don't want to feel. Those two songs yesterday, And Jesus Loves Me, Every time they come on, I think about that moment. I think about my time in that plane. And I, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's a little bit of a trigger. The first time I heard it, I was in Alabama again. And I remember sitting there and just, just taking it all in. And it's so much easier now. So much easier. Now, I want you to look at this as well as anything that you might be getting into. Because one of the things that this also did for me is that it helped me realize that I wanted to do so much more with public safety. So...
there's so many reasons for these stories that I have told you. So what about this one? You know, I want you to know, like I've said already before, that it's okay to ask for help and to be there for each other. And on top of that, you know, if you're looking to further your dispatch career, become, you know, a trainer, GIS specialist, supervisor, deputy director, director, peer support specialist, any of that, don't wait for that opportunity. Create it. Because you might not have, there might be a situation like this. Get on it. Push it, you know, push yourselves to do these things. On the other side of that too, that if you're struggling, don't wait. Ask for help or try to listen to those who are wanting to help you because it's okay. It's better to ask for help and also be aware of your coworkers. Like I've said, you know, we are family <laughs> without going into the song. <laughs> this is the era of the headset and we're in this together. When it feels like our plane is going down, it's okay to ask for help because we can we can work on this together and land safely. Now, I, I want to leave you with a quote here. This is a quote that I ended up reading after this incident happened. I've seen a few different authors to this quote, so because I'm not sure which one is the actual one, I'm just going to say that it's unknown. And I hope this quote helps you as well, because it definitely helped me. And it says, Life is too short to wake up in the morning with regrets. So love the people who treat you right. Forget about the ones who don't. And believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said it would be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. <sighs> Thank you all so very much for, for being here with me and for listening as I went through both of these stories and the comparisons between life and work life. I hope you were able to relate to it and take from it. I've got a uh, a question in here. I just want to look at it really quick. <laughs> what was wrong with the plane? <laughs> so, so here's the funny thing is um, after we had landed, um, I ended up uh, getting in line, you know, to, to get ready uh, to take off again. <laughs> it didn't stop me. That's another thing. When things like this happen, you got to jump back on and just continue. And boy, did I tempt fate, right? <laughs> that was like the good Lord saying, um, that's a little warning. <laughs> Something, you know, it was, it was interesting. But as I was waiting in line to uh, try to get the next flight out, because there was one that was leaving right away to where I was going to go. I was supposed to get back at about 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon. I didn't get home until about 2 in the morning because there was no more room for the one flight that was going out. But I ended up getting an email. And I won't give... Well, you could see in the video who the airline was, but I ended up getting an email from them saying, um, you know, thank you so much for your patience and we apologize for the inconvenience in your flight, but here's 7,000 points. <laughs> here's 7,000 points uh, that'll go towards your uh, your sky miles. And it was a, uh, a malfunction with the pressurization, pressurization system that made that happen. There was no account for whatever the burning smell was, but it was terrifying. And we were going down, but we landed safely. How crazy. And just so that I can, I can mark it in here for anybody who ends up coming back on the replay. Um, 
it was a malfunction with the pressurization system that they told us that was wrong with it that caused the oxygen masks and everything to pop down. Um, whatever it was, whether it was me talking smack in the beginning, basically the keyword in dispatch, or it really <laughs> was just, I mean, it was a malfunction, whatever it was. It's an experience that I'll never forget. And it's a situation that really helped me put life into perspective. And it's crazy how sometimes we need that, right? It sucks sometimes, but sometimes that's what we need to put life into perspective. Which is why I was saying towards the end there, if there's something that you want to do in dispatch to further yourself and those around you, to be able to educate that next generation that's coming in, do it. Don't wait. The time is now. Again, this is the era of the headset. Big things are happening. Again, thank you all so, so very much. I appreciate you being here. I'm going to bring uh, Angie uh, back on here in just a moment so that we can kind of close out um, this session. But again, I hope that you were able to take a lot from these two stories. And and I appreciate you for, for being here and for always supporting everything that uh, um, that I've been doing with the podcast and, you know, imagine listening and everything. This is a different version of the power of storytelling, but it's still the same. This is the power of storytelling. This is how we're relating with each other. This is how the movement has done so much. I am 911 because they're your stories that are going out there and people are learning healing and finding closure in them. So thank you so much for everything that you do. This has been this has been amazing.